This student, let's call her Anno, is a student on the course TU100. She's smiling because she's just seen her course results. She got a really high mark for the continuous assessment on her coursework and was hoping to do the same for her end of module assignment, the EMA. She was pretty confident of getting a good mark because she listened to and read all the advice she was given about how she could obtain the highest mark she was capable of getting. Let's see how she did it. Well, for a start, she got her assignment in on time. Despite a few last-minute problems with her internet connection, she checked the deadline on the website and seeing that it was 12 noon on the 30th of May, she thought she'd set her own deadline for two days prior to that. She'd heard some sorry tales of other students who'd left submission until the last minute, only to find their internet was down or a family problem had cropped up just before the submission date, or it could have been any of a thousand possible things that could get in the way of submitting on time. She had worked very hard to get through this course and she wasn't going to let something like that jeopardise her chances of passing at the final hurdle. Her tutor had told her that he could not grant an extension for the EMA even though he'd been able to grant her a short extension for TMA3. So she set her own deadline for the 28th of May. She zipped all requested files together as instructed and submitted the EMA two days before the deadline, which was just as well because the very next day her broadband went AWOL and gave her a couple of days headache trying to communicate with the help desk in Bangalore. Another bit of preparation that really paid off was double checking the EMA requirements. It helped to have downloaded the PFD copy of the EMA from the TU100 website. On the PDF document, she could underline or highlight any details that she knew she should take particular note of. And on there she outlined a reminder of the deadline and any word counts that she had to adhere to. Bill had had to remind Anno on a couple of occasions that on TU100 some of the assignment questions state a maximum word limit for each part of the whole question. Where this is the case, he said, you will lose marks if you write more than the specified amount. He also told her that if her answer was less than the specified maximum, then she would not be marked down. However, an answer that falls significantly short of the maximum is unlikely to have covered the required material with sufficient depth and breadth to gain full marks. So Anno looked again at the answers she'd given. She reread the questions and realised that where her word count was significantly below the maximum, she'd not given enough detail and then thought things through, rewrote some notes and made doubly sure that she added all the information required. She highlighted the names of files that she needed to submit. She even went on to tick these off as she completed them, not forgetting the PNG file needed to show her full answer to task 5 using an argument map. Anno also remembered that she'd received a lot of guidance from her tutor Bill. Bill had provided plenty of feedback written on her TMAs but also given her feed forward information. She read these PT3 comments as soon as she got each marked assignment back. Suggestions about how she could improve her writing format her references correctly, or set out her answers to maths problems more effectively. She then found it useful to review these comments before she submitted her EMA. In one of the PT3 forms, Bill had shown Anno exactly how to set out her references, and he'd even supplied a link to the Harvard guide that tells students how to set their references out in any TMA or EMA. Bill advised Anno to do everything she could to make the marker's life easier, such as placing her name, PI number and assignment title in the header of the Word document, 
making sure question numbers and parts are clearly shown in the right places, including headings for each section or subsection in a prompt analysis as in task 5 of this year's EMA, giving references formatted according to the Harvard Guide. showing all the calculations made in arriving at a maths answer. Anna remembered that Bill had also told her that in an assignment she should bear in mind the audience she is writing for, particularly for a question requiring an answer in a report format. This year's EMA set a context for the tasks the students were to undertake, that of an application for a job with a multinational oil company. Students were to think of themselves as applicants for a job with the company. For example, she noted that task 1 asked her to write a short structured report for the company's board members, many of whom do not have experience in the computing and IT field so she would have to explain a number of terms in the article in Appendix A to a literate, non-technical audience in formal language suited to this purpose. She was also expected to say how the reliability of an academic paper could be assessed. So, Anno, our fictitious TU100 student from the near future, passed the course and the EMA with flying colours. She was particularly pleased to have done so well on the end of module assessment. She now realises that just about anyone can do well on a level 1 course and shouldn't fear the EMA as long as they first follow all the instructions given in the EMA questions, second read and implement the advice given over the previous months by their tutor, especially the feed forward given in the PT3s. And the last bit of advice Bill gave to Anno was to read, read and reread her word process document before finally submitting the EMA. This is the very best way to eliminate as many errors as possible to ensure that the marker actually enjoys finding all the places that he or she can allocate marks. <laughs>